Hey all y'all, welcome back to Knit Tea Live! Yes, yes, it's the weekly live stream slash podcast and I think I got a good start. <laughs> I started on time. I don't think I'm having any technical difficulties. You will let me know in the chat box if there's something wrong with my audio or my video or whatever it is. So welcome, welcome, please. Hi, Janet. Glad you are back with us this week. You were with us last week too, I think, right? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Last week I was running late. <laughs> last week I was really running real late. So yes, please say hello in the chat box so I can say hi. Hi, Samantha. I know you're here. Um, Hey, Ever. So, this week, as people are coming into the live stream, oh, by the way, quick thing. I know this is gonna be sound silly, but it's been weighing on my mind. Not weighing that much, just something I've been thinking about. Um, I've noticed something that I feel like is unique in the YouTube knitting crochet space, and that is calling the YouTube videos podcasts. And I, because I've never been a podcaster, and I came kind of into YouTube through beauty channels where they don't call their episodes or their live streams podcast I'm always like that's so interesting to me and I'm like should I be calling this a podcast <laughs> is that what like the crafting community is expecting this to be called as a podcast because like the little like literal part of my brain sits there and goes but it's not actually a podcast it's it's video and audio but I mean you can absolutely listen to some of these as a podcast I've done that where um, I've been in my car and like a live stream that's not very visual like I'll just turn my camera around so I don't see the screen and I can just listen to what's being said that's why I always try to read off what is said in the chat box in addition to having it on screen and I'm very excited that the chat box is working this week it was not working last week I was very not happy about that but anyway I digress as per usual so anyway it was just something I was thinking about Whitney hello Whitney um, it was just something I was kind of thinking about because I've been seeing that where people calling um, their crafting videos podcasts anyway well a little something interesting about the knitting crochet fiber space here on YouTube. I'm just babbling at this point. So this week, what do we have planned for the live stream? Well, it is still Socktober. And I hope you all watched my video on my two favorite cast-ons for socks. One for when you are knitting cuff down and one for when you are knitting toe up. And um, it's still Socktober. I still want to talk about socks. <laughs> I hope you do too. And there was an interesting conversation on Twitter yesterday that I was sort of involved with about heels, specifically uh, flap and gusset versus short row heels. So my first question to all y'all is A, do you like knitting socks? That's very important. Or if you've never knitted a sock, this may be a little like what? Which is fine. We all gotta learn because I didn't know what a short row heel was from a flap and gusset before I had knitted my first sock. So you all got to start somewhere. Um, so my first question is, A, have you, do you like knitting socks? And B, what is your favorite heel for knitting socks? Or do you only know one type of heel to knit socks? Let me know in the comments. Um, Samantha, I am in the process of knitting my first sock. Yay! I'm on the heel flap right now. Yes, it's always an exciting time when you get to working your heel when you're knitting a sock. Um, Samantha, are you knitting a toe up or a cuff down sock? I'm very curious. Janet, never knitted sock as I need more compression type of sock. That's very understandable. You're gonna have a hard time, I'm imagining, I don't know for sure, but I'm imagining for hand knit socks, you'd have a hard time finding a yarn that has enough elasticity in it to really give you compression. But yeah. But you know what? 
I will say, I, here's the funny thing about me. I don't love wearing socks. I love knitting socks. Um, to me, my socks are almost like works of art that I just will work because I just want to work them. I have some over here to show. Uh, most of them I think I did show in the video, but I thought I would have them here present to just show off some different types of heels. Um, Janet, I do slippers. Yes, slippers. I mean, what is a slipper except a sock with no leg? You know, you're still doing a heel turn. You're still working a toe. Do you like, Janet, to knit your slippers toe up or do you start at the back? Because I, <laughs> I, I don't have it with me in the room, in the craft room, but I did knit one half of a slipper, meaning a, I didn't knit the second pair, but I kind of made it my own kind of like, um, flip floppy like slipper but I never put anything on the bottom of it to give it some grip and I sort of just abandoned the project <laughs> it didn't felt the way I wanted to <laughs> I was trying to make felted these like felted slippers so I'm a, a truth be told I'm a barefoot person I like being barefoot <laughs> so anyway um so yeah, I thought I would talk a little bit about heels today. And then once, you know, we feel like we've covered that topic, I do have a spooky pattern spotlight planned. And we are going to try. I'm going to try. <laughs> we'll see if it works. I'm going to try to do the desktop share. I haven't tried it in a while. I've been d relying on screen recordings to do these pattern spotlights, but I really want to try to get the desktop share to work because frankly, it's easier for me if I could just share the desktop and it gives me more flexibility in talking about stuff, especially for what I'm trying to do today. So anyway, that's the plan for today. Uh, if you have not already, please make sure to give this a thumbs up. If you are watching this on the replay or you are new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe hit the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. These things help YouTube know that I am a channel people enjoy and to share me with other people who have not yet discovered the joy that is Carrie Craft Geek. <laughs> but, um, and also please comment if you're watching on the replay, please comment during the conversation. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I read the comments. I answer back. I like all of that. So please join in the conversation in the comments if you're watching this on the replay. Um, so anyway, not seeing a lot of opinions about heels. So this is the thing about heels and socks. There's lots of different types of heels, actually. Um, and I think that People have very, surprisingly, so surprising, knitters have very strong opinions in terms of what kind of heel and toe they like to work. And like most things in knitting, all of them, I think, have their advantages and their disadvantages, and all of them have their place in knitting. I think what you prefer, what works best, is a combination of personal preference, and what might best suit the pattern of a sock. So for me, when I am, cause I usually make up my own sock patterns cause that's what I do. Um, for me, when I'm looking at heels, I'm really looking at kind of two, uh, a few factors. A, do I enjoy working that type of heel? Cause you want to knit what you enjoy. B, does the heel that I'm considering fit with what I want to accomplish with the sock pattern? Does it work well with the flow of the stitch pattern? Does it work well with the direction that I'm knitting the sock? Because people have very strong feelings <laughs> about knitting toe up or cuff down socks. Some people will only knit toe up socks. Some people really like to stick with the cuff down sock. And me, I am ecumenical. I love both. It really depends on what I want to accomplish with a particular sock, whether I want to knit it cuff down or toe up. Normally it has to do with just sort of the directionality of the stitch pattern. 
and how I want that to be oriented. That's my thought process. And if I'm knitting toe up, you can do flap and gusset with a toe up sock, but it's not, it's a little more involved. And so I tend to not do it. But um, the other thing, of course, with heel that you have to think about is fit. Some people's, like my foot is very average, I guess I would say. Like I have a narrow heel, but my my instep is an, it's an average instep. I don't have, I have arches, but they're not particularly high arches. And so pretty much in my experience, any heel that I have tried to wear on a sock has suited me just fine. Like I don't have to make a lot of size adjustments to heels to make it work for my foot, but not everyone has that experience. Some people have what's called a high instep and the instep is really, I don't, I'm gonna do, I don't wanna put my foot on camera cause I don't wanna gross people out cause some people have issues with feet <laughs> and I respect that, but the instep, sometimes people think, oh, if you have a high arch, that means you have a high instep. Not really, because the instep is really kind of that area that runs in a circle around the top of your foot and around the heel, like, and it's more of an elliptical. <laughs> and I don't have a, I don't have a foot near, oh, hey, here we go. Hey, look, it's my toy bear. So this isn't exactly representative of a human foot, Obvi. But the instep is really this, from what I understand, is if this is the heel, it's this area that goes all the way around, right? So people with a higher instep need a deeper heel, like right here. People with a lower instep need a smaller, like if you're doing a flap and gusset, you need a longer flap for your instep if you have a high instep. And then if you have a shorter one, you need a shorter instep. And if you're perfectly average instep like me, <laughs> a square flap works perfectly fine and pretty much any heel is going to be fine. But <laughs> people have very strong opinions about their heel preferences. So who wants to look at some heels? Raise your hand if you'd like to look at a heel. Some heels. By the way, I have my coffee. It is delicious. Oh, okay, sorry. My chat in my, sorry, in my software, my chat is not updating it. So I've missed some comments. Um, I'm in the process. Whitney, I love knitting socks now that I learned the magic loop method. Yes, absolutely. Am I all caught up now? Huh, weird. Sorry. Anyway, yes, I am kind of with you on that. My personal preference for knitting socks is two circular needles, which is similar to magic loop. It's kind of doing ma with magic loop with two circular needles instead of one big one. I love knitting socks that way. Um, I am not a DPN person when it comes to socks. I much prefer organizing my sock knitting either on magic loop or double or on two circular needles. Um, what about second sock syndrome? I knit slippers top down usually. Oh, okay, cool. Because when I knit my one slipper, I did it toe up. Yeah, second sock syndrome is for real. Uh, I know people love and get around second sock syndrome by doing two at a time socks, either on magic loop or on two circular needles. I didn't love it. I, tr I tried it. I've tried doing the two socks at a time thing. Um, and I did knit two sleeves at a time on one, my first cardigan that I knitted. And I gotta say for me personally, the futsiness of knitting two at a time socks. When you knit two socks at a time, you have to have two separate yarn sources, right? One for each sock. And the futsiness of dealing with having those two balls of yarn was not worth it. And if I made any mistakes and I had to frog back on one sock, it was just a pain in the tuchus. 
It was a painting that took us if there was a mistake, especially if the mistake was on the second sock that was further away, because then you're having to take one sock off and do all this stuff and then try to make sure they're in the same place. Or you had to frog both socks back to keep everything together and bleh, not worth it to me. The way I overcome over the way that I overcome second sock syndrome is to just as soon as I cast off the first sock, cast on the second one and just get over myself. That's kind of my way of doing it. Uh, let's see. Short rows. Yes, short row socks. I'm going to admit I I have a lot of fondness for the short row heel, which I will now bring out a sock to show that off. Um, I will bring out two socks. Both of these socks, by the way, were in my video this week, but I love them so much. I will show them off as often as I can. I love DPNs and flaps with gussets on top down. I'm kind of basic that way. There is nothing basic, nothing basic about a flap and gusset. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with flap and gussets in terms of patterning and everything. Um, I'll show you, it's not a flap and gusset, but it's kind of a traditional flap and gusset, but in a bit I'll show a sock that is a variation of a flap and gusset heel and you'll see what I did with that heel. Um, actually I'm going to try a different light on my overhead and I'm going to just see how this works. If it's not enough light, if it's too much shadow, let me know in the comments and I got my other light ready. So overhead, overhead composite, there we go. Okay. Oh, I'm glad you made it too, Jillian, for the polarizing conversation. Um, and thank you for making the effort to stop by. I appreciate it. I know you're busy with your own channel. All right, so this here, this is my, what I call my Maypole sock. I, this is a knee-high sock that I knitted. It was actually knitted from the toe up. And I knitted it from the toe up because I wanted this stitch pattern. I don't think it's enough light. I'm gonna just make my own there. I think that's better. Okay, that's better. Let me turn that off. Boop. So I wanted this stitch pattern was very directional. And if I knitted it from the cuff down, the stitch pattern would have looked like this instead. And I wanted it to look that socket. Thank you, Bear. Hi, I'm so glad you're here this week. I never managed to finish a sock. I've been working on one pair since June. That's okay. The important thing is to enjoy the process, right? I mean, we know how many projects I have not finished. There's a big old file. But um, I wanted this sock pattern to run up this way. And um, it's really a combination of a couple of different um, stitch patterns because you have this pattern here. I forgot the name of this. I'll have to look it back up. But if you remember um, a bee in her bonnet, from the pattern spotlight last week. This is that same stitch pattern on the sock that she has on her sock. It's a really pretty, pretty pattern. But here we have the short row heel. I did a short row heel on this because I love my short row heels and I felt like doing it. <laughs> that was really the reason why. This stitch pattern, I could have really done any, almost any kind of, of heel that I wanted. Um, it wasn't, it wouldn't disrupt the flow of anything because the bottom of the foot is just stockinette. And then I start up the stitch pattern on the back of the leg once I'm past the heel. And so I just enjoy doing a short row heel. Now the short row, and by the way, a lot of times people are like with short row heels, they don't like to do them because um, they think that you can only do a short row heel and stockinette. This short row heel, I don't know if you can see it very well on camera right now, but I, in fact, <laughs> this is actually partridge stitch, but doing partridge stitch on a short row heel turns it into heel stitch. Because, and it just has to do with how, the, how everything lines up with the slipping of the stitches. Thank you, Jillian. She's, let's see. Bear, that's Whitney. I love that pattern. It's so pretty. Thank you. I should write it up. Jillian, that's stunning. Thank you. So you can, in fact, on the back of a heel with a short row heel, if you want to, you can do some kind of 
of slip pattern like heel stitch or partridge stitch, which you usually do on heels because it is pretty, but also you do it to reinforce that heel because the heel is subject to a lot of wear and tear and that's usually what's going to wear out on a sock first is the heel so um i disagree <laughs> that you can only do short row heels with stockinette because clearly i did not use stockinette there um so yeah that's this sock now this is another short row heel that i did but I actually did this short row heel as an afterthought heel. And the reason I did that was this is actually the first sock I ever designed. It's, yeah, this is the second not sock I ever knitted, if you want to know the truth. Um, but this is the, and I did the short row toe. This was also knitted toe up because I hadn't knitted a toe up sock. And so I wanted to. And this is a short row toe. And when you do this on a toe up sock, you actually cast on all of your stitches, do your short rows to form the toe, and then you work up the rest of the sock. I really like using short row toes on a toe up sock as opposed to like a wedge toe, where, because with the wedge toe, you just cast on the first few stitches here and then you do your increases to create your shape. Thanks. Janet, what type of short row? I generally do German double stitch short rows, or I will do what's called a shadow stitch short row. Shadow stitch short row, if you've ever done a lifted increase, is similar to a lifted increase. What you do with a shadow stitch, sometimes it's called twin stitch, is you knit up to where you're going to turn your work, and then that first stitch that's on the other side of the turning point, um, that you would normally wrap the yarn around when you do your a wrap and turn short row. Instead, you work the yarn into the row below and you put it up on your needle, then you turn your work and work back. Um, but yes, I'm a fan of German double stitch and twin stitch. I also like the yarn over short row as well. That is actually a video I wanna do. I wanna do a boss knitting uh, video where I talk about substituting short row techniques for one another. Because the truth is, I'm gonna let you in on the secret right now. All short rows are the same thing. They're all doing the same thing. They're just approaching them with different ways to uh, bridge the gap, but they all work basically the same way. They're just, when you work a short row, I'm not, I'm, I'm talking in code right now. When you work a short row, in order to close the gap, you leave a little loop behind. I think I talked about this in my um, short row heel video. I did a video on the short row heel technique that I like best, which is called a boomerang heel and a yo-yo heel. They're actually two separate things. So I talk about this more in that video if you wanna check it out. But in short rows, you go up, you leave a little loop of yarn behind that you're gonna work that loop of yarn into the first stitch of the stitches you haven't worked yet. <laughs> and that closes the gap, right? All short row techniques are doing that. They're all leaving a loop of yarn behind for you to work into the stitch later to close the gap. It's just how you're leaving that loop of yarn behind is what makes one short row technique different from another one. I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna do a video where I really break it down and demonstrate it all much more clearly. <laughs> that is a video I've had in my head for a while. I think I'm gonna do it next month because this month's videos are sort of all laid out but this sock, this is mosaic knitting. I knitted this toe up and I actually did this heel as, this is a short row heel, okay? But I did it as an afterthought. <laughs> so, what type, Janet, yes, I only know three. Wrap and turn, German and Japanese. I would love to see other options. Yes, um, and those are three really, those are three good options. Um, and, Am I gonna sneeze? No, no, I'm not gonna sneeze. Keep it in, sneeze, hold it together. Okay, got it under control. <laughs> but this heel, I actually did it as an afterthought because you can do that with short rows. Um, you don't have to, if you do an afterthought heel, and the reason to do an afterthought heel 
Well, there's two reasons. One is it's very easy with color work to do an afterthought heel because it allows you to keep this stitch pattern just going uninterrupted throughout the entire sock and you don't have to worry about any increase or decrease lines with your color work pattern and that's why a lot of times with things like mosaic or stranded color work socks that's why a lot of times you see things like short row heels and afterthought heels is because it just makes working the heel easier not having to worry about doing those increases or decreases for a gusset because what a gusset is, is it's a triangle of fabric that you're working to make more space <laughs> in an area of a piece, whether you're talking about a glove or a sock or what have you. That's what a gusset is. So um, for whatever reason, with this sock, I wanted to do a short row because I hadn't done a short row heel yet. And I wanted to do an afterthought heel because I hadn't done an afterthought heel yet. So I did both. I did an afterthought. So you knit up to a place where you're going to have the heel and then you do a row with some waist yarn. Then you knit the rest of your sock. And then once you've cast it off, you go back in and you take out that waist yarn and you pick up all the stitches around the waist yarn, both the upside down stitches and the regular stitches, and you knit a heel. The other nice thing about an afterthought heel is if the heel wears out on you, because heels wear out, you can cut away the heel, re-pick up these stitches, and knit the heel again. So that's the other nice thing with an afterthought heel, is it actually gives you an opportunity to replace your heels. So it can be really good for kids who can be very, very hard wearing on their socks. Whitney, have you ever done the fish lips heel? I think that's what it's called. Yes. Okay, so fish lip heel. I have never done it, technically. I actually have the book. I have it, I've read it. I need to read it again to make sure I'm correct on this. So, but here's the thing with fish lip peel. Let me, let me switch cameras real quick as I talk about this. The fish lip peel is a short row heel. That's all it is. What that book is really doing very well, it does a very good job, is giving you guidance on how to measure the foot so you know where to start working your short rows so that you get the proper fit. But the fish lip heel, I read it and I'm like, this is a short row heel. That's all it is. So it has very good advice in it. Um, I, I'm not ragging on it in any way at all. I just want to be clear about that. But I think sometimes people think that it's a special type of heel when really it's not. It's it's just a short row heel. That's all it is. Again, I'd have to read it again to make sure I'm correct on this. But when I read it, I was literally going, this is a short row heel. <laughs> Bear. Oh, good to know. I was wondering about that one too. Yeah, people talk about it and I think people aren't always aware because that has become such a standard introduction for people to the short row heel. They just aren't aware <laughs> that it's a short row heel. And here's the thing, which, well, like I said, if you want to hear me talk more about short row heels, because <laughs> I could talk about it all day long, because I do, I really enjoy I enjoy the short row heel. A, I just enjoy them. I enjoy working short rows. Short rows is one of my favorite knitting techniques. That dishcloth that I'm knitting all the time that I have the free pattern for if you sign up for my newsletter. Part of the reason I enjoy it so much is because I'm working short rows and I love working short rows. So I love working a short row heel. The short row, the disadvantage of the short row and why people don't love it all the time, is if you have a high instep, the short row heel can be less than ideal. It is not a heel that you can easily modify to fit any foot. If you, if the great controversy, it wasn't a great controversy, the little, little flubby, flubby flub, I made that word up, about heels on Twitter yesterday had to do with somebody tweeted that they didn't think short row heels are pretty. 
What is pretty is a matter of opinion. I think short row heels are very pretty. I love the look of a short row heel and the overall design of a sock because to me, there are some beautiful things that you can do with a flap and gusset in terms of stitch patterning. I'll give you an example right now because I feel like I'm talking around this a little bit. This is another sock. I didn't show this one in the video on Friday. I meant to, but I didn't get around to it. So um, you'll be able to see it now. Turn my light back on. This is another knee-high sock that I did. I was really into doing knee-high socks for about five seconds. Um, you can't, this is kind of a rib-based pattern, so I'm gonna spread this out so you can really see what the pattern looks like. This is a stitch pattern here. And um, this is a cuff down sock that I knitted. I used the German twist cast on that I showed off in that video. And on the back, what I did for the center back of the sock was, I love this. I wanted to have a stitch pattern that went all the way down the back of the heel. So in the, in the center back is like this arrow right here. Hopefully you can see that. So that's the arrow and it goes all the way down the sock. And I did this for a couple reasons. I did this A so that if anybody else wanted to ever make this and I wrote up the pattern, it would be very easy to adjust the sizing because you could put more purl stitches around here, around this area at the back of the, of the calf so it would be easier to make adjustments for sizing. And then I brought that arrow pattern all the way down the back of the heel like that. Now this is not a traditional flap and gusset. This is what's called the strong heel, but it looks like a flap and gusset because it's basically a variation of one. It has a gusset here, all right, and here. So you can see there's a gusset. There's a decreased line right up for here. And you can see the heel turn, it's a very deep heel turn. It comes underneath like this. This strong heel though, unlike the traditional flap and gusset, is all worked in the round and there's no picking of stitches. <laughs> there's no picking of stitches, yes! Uh, the reason I don't always enjoy doing a flap and gusset is because I don't like picking up stitches. That is a thing with me. And um, yes, I don't love picking up stitches. And what I loved about this heel is you can have the flap and gusset, which um, you can, and you can bring that pattern, this stitch pattern all the way down into the heel, but I don't have to, I don't have to pick up stitches. I, I think that's brilliant. I think that is brilliant. If you want. Um, I think it was Bear actually mentioned possibly doing a video on my favorite um, heels. And I've already done a video on my, the short row heel, but I'm thinking that next week I'm gonna shoot a video on doing the strong heel so you can see what it is like to work this. If you are like me and you don't love picking up stitches, so you kind of tend to avoid flap and gusset, this might be a good type of heel to look at. And yeah, it's it's fun heel to work too. Bears, yay, I don't have to pick up stitches, right? Right? Jilly. I Evie, I stand a I stand a size inclusive queen. So many patterns don't account for calf size when there is complex stitch patterning. Absolutely. And that's what <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I just make up my own sock patterns, because like I I sit there and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get one size fits all sock patterns. It doesn't make sense, especially for a, especially for a knee high sock. Like that's not even, that's not even possible. So, um, and like me, I have little feet, you know? I have little feet, I have tiny ankles. And so average socks, sock sizes tend to be a little big on me and a little baggy and that's what I tend to run into with socks um so my husband's feet are so funny he's got like these wide flat long feet right they're like they're like abominable snowman feet <laughs> and he's a short guy and um but he has small ankles and so he, to, like his socks are always like 
big and baggy because he has to buy he buys socks to fit his feet but then like they're all baggy around his ankles because his ankles are like tiny not tiny but they're smaller ankles for a man and um I'm always like, you know, if I knit you your own pair of socks, I can size these perfectly for you. And that's the big advantage, I think, to the flap and gusset heels, because there's more than one. Um, the advantage to the flap and gusset heels is they are just so flexible in terms of sizing and being able to get a really customized fit. And it's hard to beat that. And it's really easy with flap and gussets to add reinforcement to those heels. So you get heels that last. So, I mean, I think, like I said, I think all heels have their place and there's no reason not to just celebrate all of them and talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of each of them so people can make an informed choice. I think sometimes what happens though, and look, I'm guilty of this myself, I'm totally guilty of this myself, is A, sometimes we get all snobby about our preferences and I think there's some snobbery around flap and gusset that kind of creeps in sometimes where it's like, <laughs> where people feel like, if you're knitting a short row heel, for example, you're doing it because it's easier and that it's short, that looks more, I've seen it from several places, talk about short row heels like, well, sure, if you want a sock that looks like you bought it in a store, <laughs> and there's something about that where it's like somehow the flap and gusset is elevated because it's somehow speaking to a more handmade feel. And I think that's where sometimes these conversations about preferences starts to go into a eh place. Like I'm all for having strong opinions. God knows I got my strong opinions. I don't think anyone's ever going to accuse me of not having a strong opinion. <laughs> But something I do try to remind myself, and I fail at this all the time, but to remind myself is not to yuck somebody else's yum. I have reasons for my preferences. I try to give what those reasons are, but I also try to understand why other people have preferences for their choices and not to place a value judgment on it. And I think sometimes that's what starts occurring with this stuff. Janet, is anyone else getting a picture in picture of Carrie? Oh, mm, I mean, there is a picture in picture. You should be seeing me and the overhead camera in the lower right hand corner. My logo is to the right. I should take, I, I gotta turn that logo off when I'm live streaming. But it shouldn't have both of me here. I'm just gonna switch to this one. How about that? Yes, thanks. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that, so this, so yes, I'm going to do that video. I gotta knit up a sample. But I'm gonna do that video on the strong heel so you can get an idea of what that is, what it looks like to work it, and yes, bear, it looks okay to me. Okay, good, good, good. One more sock I wanna show, since we're talking about flap and gussets. Because this isn't really a flap and gusset heel. But because it doesn't have a gusset, <laughs> but it is a flap. And if you don't, if you want to work a color work sock and you don't want to do a short row or an afterthought, this is something to think about. This heel. Ever. Your husband's feet sound like mine. Big, wide feet, itty bitty ankles. Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. One more. One more sock. I love this sock. You, this sock is going to look so familiar to all y'all. You know this sock. You know the sock I'm about to show. Jill, Evie. It's funny because I admire short row more than flap and gusset. I learned flap and gusset first. Short rows confused me for so long. I have the grass is always greener sock envy. Yeah, I mean, there's something about that, right? Where you're like, oh, there's that technique everyone talks about that I don't do. And then it must be so much better. And it's just what you enjoy. Uh, if you, I think I give a pretty good explanation of how the short row sock works in my boomerang. I'm going to plug that video, my boomerang short row heel, because I'm going to be honest, in this instance, 
<laughs> I don't love, I'll just say it right now. I don't love the short row heel technique that I first learned. And I think a lot of people first learn where you, um, so when you knit a short row heel, you knit your short rows, right? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then you do a second set of short rows. And what you're doing with those short rows is you are working up to your wrap that you need to work, working that wrap, and then doing a second wrap, a new wrap, so that you can turn and go back and work the other way. Because you're working a second set of short rows that are mirroring your first set of short rows. And that's what creates that cup that is the short row heel. Imagine this is the short row heel. It's a cup right? Um, and in this vid in that video on the boomerang heel, I really explain what's happening. In the type of short row heel that I first learned, that the exact name I can't remember, it's, it's an abbreviation. Bear, I learned flap and gusset first too. I think I understand short rows much better now, thanks to you. Oh, thank you, Bear. Um, but in the technique that I first learned for short row heels is when you went to go work those second set of short rows, you would have to basically, you would end up with two wraps and a stitch, and you'd have to basically do a double decrease. And it was just a painting that took us and I didn't enjoy it. The boomerang heel eliminates that. Because with the boomerang heel and an alternative version, the yo-yo heel, you actually work all of your wraps first before you start working your second set of short rows. So I think it's easier to wrap your head around what's going on. A, B, you avoid having to do double decreases because you don't have two wraps to work. And there's some other things I really like about it. So, you know, if you're interested, if you're interested, got time, got a minute, check out the video. Okay, um, last one. We all know this sock. This is the sock that is in <laughs> my logo. I love this sock so much. Uh, this is a Fair Isle sock. I did knit this uh, cuff down, and I didn't want to, for this sock, do another short row heel. I felt like it was becoming a little too easy for me to do a short row heel and rely on it, and I wanted to stretch myself a little bit. So I did this heel. This is called the German Bootstrap Heel. It is a flap heel without a gusset. So with this heel, and this is, heel is great for color work because you work a flap, you know, straight back and forth like you do with the flap and gusset, but, um, and the, you turn the heel and you end up with this like square heel, which is very similar to, which is basically the Dutch heel, right? But, I'm going to get to it, but when you are finished working the heel flap, turning the heel and picking up all your stitches, you do have to pick up stitches, you end up back at the same stitch count as when you started. So you do not need to decrease any stitches away. So technically, this is not a gusset. You don't have a gusset technically with this sock. But, um, oh, let me do this one. Here we go. You don't technically have a gusset with this sock, but this sock, if you want more of a flap, you can do a German bootstrap and not disrupt your color work. And I haven't gotten deep into this. This is something I'm more speculating on as opposed to being a authoritative statement. But I believe that with this bootstrap type of heel, if you needed a deeper instep, you could knit a longer flap. Um, the thing about the German bootstrap heel, it doesn't have a gusset, but <laughs> the other thing about it that might scare people away, although it really shouldn't, is you do have to do some math. There is math involved with doing the German bootstrap because you need to calculate when to do some decreases before you get to the heel turn, and then you have to do some calculations in terms of the heel turn so that you make sure, and you have to do calculations in terms of how many um, rows to knit the flap as well. And you have to do all that so that when you finish and you've gotten back to the original stitch count, or you've picked up your stitches, you have your original stitch count again. So there is some math involved. It's not complicated math. 
no knitting math is complicated, but I know people get really like, uh, uh, ah, 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 about knitting math. <laughs> Here's a little secret. Here's a little something something about me. I'm now better at math since becoming a knitter than I was before. And maybe it's not I'm better at it, it's just that I now have real world application for a lot of math things now, and so it makes more sense to me than when maybe I was a kid. So yeah, those are some of the socks. So um, any more thoughts, questions about, um, oops, there we go. Any more thoughts or questions about socks, sock heels, sock knitting? Um, we still have a few more minutes so we can try to do a little bit of pattern spotlight. Because, you know, if not, I think we're gonna move forward. Just check in the stream real quick. By the way, if you are just joining us now, thank you. I have to remember the thumbs up for Carrie. Bye, friends. Bye, Evie. Thank you for joining us. By the way, Evie's going to be in Pattern Spotlight. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try, guys. I'm going to try to do the desktop share. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this working this time. I've got. Although I shouldn't get too excited, it's 2020. It's 2020, and we all know what 2020 has wrought. Hi, mom. Hugs. My mom's here. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Uh, desktop share composite. All right. Oh, hey. Okay, there it is. My desktop is up. Let's see. I gotta look over the. And it's up. All right. Can you hear me? Because that's been an issue is when I've done this, losing audio. So let me know if you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up, say all good before I continue on. Yes, I'm getting a yes, you can hear me. Yes. Oh my gosh, if we could get this desktop share thing to work, it would make things so much easier. Okay, because now I'm gonna be looking off to the side quite a bit because I have to I only have one monitor, so I have to go over to the actual um, web page. Hi, thank you. I am subscribed to my newsletter. Thank you. So first thing we're going to do actually with Pattern Spotlight is I'm going to, is that there? Oh, okay. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to actually look first at a couple of new patterns uh, that are up on Fiber Happenings this week. Not a lot of new pattern releases that I found this week, um, but I'm going to show you what there was. So first, doop doop doop, craftivism still going on. Always check that out. First, we have from Fierce Hook. Man, Fierce Hook. She is. I'm amazed how often she's able to release new patterns. This is her newest pattern. This is called the Breaker Waves Shawl, and it is. Excuse me. She is celebrating her 10 year anniversary of having her own design business. So congratulations to Fierce Hook. This is a crochet pattern. The discount is no longer valid. I need to update that. Um, her discount code ended, wait a minute, did it end yesterday? Yes, it ended yesterday. So, but it's still a beautiful pattern. It's still a gorgeous pattern. And she has a lot of beautiful patterns. In fact, if we have time at the end, I will show you, as long as this keeps working, I will show you my, what I love from her that's on my Etsy favorite list. Um, next up, this is from my finger, my, my flying fingers. And boy, does she, this is, she's another crochet designer. And yes, her fingers fly. She's always coming out with new stuff. And she has this, let me move. Oh, I can't. You know what? I'm going to, unfortunately, the, the, I'm going to, I hope this doesn't screw things up. I'm going to turn off the chat box because it's just in the way of the picture and I can't, I don't want to move anything. So hopefully that doesn't screw anything up. Okay. <laughs> Let me know if you can keep hearing me. Um, but this is so adorable and it's just in time for the holidays. This is a reindeer glasses, eyeglass holder. I 
it's so cute. And she has a bunch of these types of projects. And this is one of those crochet projects that would be just great. Can hear you, yay, thank you, Ever. Um, this is the kind of project that would be really good if you just have scrap yarn that you need to um, use up. This type of pattern is great. And she has a bunch of holiday themed items already in her store and as well as Halloween themed items. So that's what we're gonna look at next is we're gonna look at some spooky pattern spotlight. So um, I'm gonna go over to Etsy where I saved a bunch of things. Etsy official site. And you down in the description box, I do have links to everything I'm gonna be showing in Pattern Spotlight. In the Etsy store, there is a link to my spooky spotlight um, list because there's so many things you can find in Etsy. It's a little overwhelming. So I have a favorites list that I created as well as kind of um, two links to broader searches so that you don't have to kind of like ramble around yourself trying to figure out how to have a decent Etsy search if you're interested in finding more holiday themed items. Oh, I gotta sign in. Okay, I'm going to bring up my webcam real quick while I sign into Etsy. And I hope I can, oh shoot. Oh shoot, oh shoot. I didn't sign in, always something I didn't think about when doing this. Um, I know how I'm gonna do this, okay. I know how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to YouTube and I'm gonna click on my own link. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I just gotta go over to it first. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm, I was so excited about Pattern Spotlight working that I forgot a key aspect of it. So um, this is this is live, it's all live. Okay, here we go, all right. <laughs> We can now go back to desktop share. There we go. Okay, so this is my spooky pattern spotlight favorites list. There is a link for this down in the description box. This is an affiliate link. Affiliate use, Utilizing my affiliate links helps support my channel. Um, affiliate links just means that I might earn a small commission if you purchase something by using one of my links. Um, if you want to buy something anyway, and you use one of my links, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Um, but please don't feel like you need to buy anything just to support me. <laughs> Subscribing, giving me thumbs up, commenting in the description box is all wonderful ways to support my channel. Checklists and lifelines, they make life better. Yes, they do. <laughs> Yes, they do. But here is some like patterns that I just found on Etsy. They're a mix of crochet and knit patterns that um, I just think are amazing. And my fingers flies has so many. I don't know how she does it, but this is one of my favorite things that I saw, like hands down, is this cute little Halloween gnome. Like how adorable is this hat? Like. You could just knit the hat. Bears, the zombie is very cute. It is so cute. We can go look at that. Oops. We can go look at that. Um, but a crochet, a warlock gnome. I mean, it's just so adorable. I mean, I can't even tell you. I was almost overwhelmed by all of the cuteness when I started looking at patterns for this Halloween, like, spooky spotlight. And there's still plenty of time to knit some of these projects. A knit project that I saw that I just was like, I'm gonna be honest, a lot of what I saw was more for crochet. And I love crochet. But sometimes I think us knit knitters, we need more like fun, whimsical like projects. And I saw this and I thought, this is a great, this is just spooky mittens where you're able to embellish off of what looks like a fairly straightforward fingerless glove pattern and you just add these embellishments on top of it. I think it's adorable. <laughs> it's so cute. I can't even control myself. Um, let's see. Let's look at the zombie. This one, isn't this so cute? 
I know, I feel like I'm like, I'm being so original. It's so cute, that's so cute, and that's so cute, and that's so cute. But this zombie knitting pattern from Stitch Witch Creations, I mean, how cute is this? It's like a zombie fairy. <laughs> it's just so, so cute. And you know, I think knitting stuffed toys, it's a really fun, quick project for us knitters, but what I like about it too is these types of projects are small, but they do give you an opportunity to expand your skills because um, a lot of times they do utilize short rows. I don't know if this particular pattern utilizes short rows or what exactly, but a lot of times patterns like this will utilize short rows and shaping techniques and various things. So it is an opportunity on a small project, usually that you can do with scrap yarn, to expand your skills in terms of knitting or crochet or whatever you're interested in. So these types, and like, they're adorable. Oh, this one is really cool. This one is more, I think a little bit more sophisticated, but I think it's very cool. This is the Belfry Bats Fingerless Mitts Knitting Pattern from Patricia Wake. Um, it is a stranded color work pattern and it looks like she has a if I'm looking at that correctly, it looks like it's a gusset with pattern work on it. So that's exciting. I'm very loving this. So if you want something that's a little bit more grown up, but gives a little touch of the spooky Halloween, this might be the pattern for you. Something else, sometimes you can have a pattern that isn't designed to be spooky, but you can make it spooky. This shawl which i think is just gorgeous anyway this is from richie newen designs she is on the fiber indie list and she is one of my twitter mutuals and this pattern isn't designed for halloween but i think that if you do this in the right colors you've got an amazing spider web shawl that you can just throw over your shoulders and maybe you're not able to go trick-or-treating this year because it's 2020, but in the trick-or-treating years to come, you can throw this on for a little spooky fun. <laughs> so it's a way to reimagine some patterns that are out there to make it more in the holiday right now spirit. This is another one where I kind of had that same feeling when I saw it. This is not specifically um, for Halloween, but I saw this and in the black color, I was like, oh, you could totally knit up this chunky cow pattern. It wouldn't take too long. It's in a chunky yarn and you could wear it and it just in black or navy blue, you know, what have you, and wear it outside on a cold evening and it could just be part of kind of a spooky Halloween costume. So sometimes you can have a pattern that can multitask. And you could still enjoy it all winter long as well. Because, yeah, I was a little, I was, I admit, a little sad. I wasn't seeing more knitting patterns. Um, okay, there's one more. I have to just, is this a knit pattern? This crochet pattern, Zombie Pumpkin, is adorable. These little knit pumpkins here, um, I'm not going to click on them, but... This is great for this time of year because you can knit these up just to decorate your Thanksgiving table or or you can decorate them. Put on some googly eyes. You can embroider on a mouth and eyes or something and you can have more Halloween jack-o'-lantern type knitted pumpkins to put out. And again, just looking at this, this isn't the type of project that should take a ton of time. So you'd still have time to do this for Halloween if you are so motivated to do so. So, but I wanted to take a special look at this pattern because I think this is like the cutest thing. Again, it is a crochet pattern, but this mummy trick or treat bag, I mean, <laughs> it's so damn cute. I mean, this is so damn cute. Sure, knit this for your child, your favorite niece or nephew or, um, you know, person in your life who's still out trick-or-treating or would like to, <laughs> it's 2020. Hopefully people aren't really going out trick-or-treating. But um, this is something that you could give to a child in your life and they would treasure it for years to come. Or 
keep it for yourself and just carry it around for when you go to the grocery store and you're just picking up a couple of items, you've got the cutest shopping bag in the world. Like, am I wrong? I don't think so. When am I? Often. I am often wrong. <laughs> So that's some of the stuff that is on my favorites list. I might add more to this favorites list today if I have time. We shall see. Next. Um, oh, we're running out of time. Do we mind if I run just a squidge long just to show you a couple of things at Lovecrafts that I flagged? Because there's some more knitting type patterns over at Lovecrafts actually than um, Etsy. So... I just have to get to it the page real quick, which won't take me as long because, oops. Let me just stop that. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me get over here. This is it. Okay. So, like, I'm so excited this desktop share is working. I can't even tell you how excited I am. But here's the desktop share here. Um, Lovecrafts, like at Etsy, on Lovecrafts, you can find my community page, it's Carrie Craft Geek. On there is where all of the Fiber Indie List people who have uh, patterns up on Lovecrafts, you can find everything there on my community page if you're looking for those people specifically. And you can find my favorites list as well on Lovecrafts. Um, and they have, and I have a link. I Yes, in the description box, there is a specific link to Lovecrafts has its own Halloween page with some free patterns as well. So if you're interested in some Halloween projects, check out Lovecrafts. But these are some of the projects I flagged on my spooky spotlight favorite list. And I think they're all adorable, but I am especially love in love with this spider and bat hat. Like... I, I know this is designed for kids. I'm a child at heart. I want this for myself. If we were having trick-or-treaters come by this year, oh, oh, and by the way, um, for the rest of today, Lovecrafts is having 15% off almost everything. It ends tonight. So if you're interested in anything on, that could be on Lovecrafts, not everything is on sale, but most things are on sale. So if you're interested, today's the day to go look at Lovecrafts because it's 15% off almost everything. Yes, I am an affiliate with Lovecrafts, but it's still a good shopping opportunity if you're in the mood for that. But yeah, this hat, I want this hat. If we were gonna have trick-or-treaters come by this year, which we're not, I would have this hat ready to put on so I could show up at the door because like, it's just adorable. It's so cute. I mean, come on. All right, um, let me know if you are having any problems with the stream. I just got a message, but sometimes that doesn't mean anything. Sometimes it does. And something else real quick. There's this cute little Intarsia ghost sweater for kids. Um, but I wanted to look at, I, I can't help it. I love all the little, <laughs> little, the little, the little doll knitted tchotchke things. I mean, how cute is this? This is like collection. You've got a witch, you've got a little ghost and a jack-o'-lantern and it's just adorable. And you know, you could create a whole little Halloween knit scape on your mantle with this collection and some other things. I mean, oh, I know, right? It's so cute. It's so cute. I can't even stand it. I know. I feel like, I feel like all I'm saying is like, it's so cute, but it is. This is all just adorable, adorable stuff. Um, so yeah, that's some of what I have on my, there we go. And let's switch over here. Oh my God, guys, guys, I, we did it. We did it. We did a desktop share and there was no technical problems. And yes, yes, so excited. Oh my God, I can't even tell you. Cause doing the whole, oh, there's one thing I do need to show real quick. And I'm gonna do this with the video composite, but I wanna show this off. Cause 
Um, did I not? Yes, I did. Where are you? Did I not? Okay, we're, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, making it happen. Um, I just have to get to the page. Um, cause I do want to show this off cause Evie has been such an amazing supporter to me this last couple of months. Um, I forget exactly when she kind of like stumbled into my life, but she liked a video and we started DMing a little bit and she's just been incredibly supportive and kind to me. And she recently released her, um, Okay, she recently released her, oh, that's not what it, uh, sorry. Here we go, okay. <laughs> she re, uh, la, 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 la. let's see, hopefully this works. Desktop share composite. Okay, she recently released her first pattern, knit pattern, and it's this hat, and it's the Knit a Spiderweb Cloche, and it is so cute. Let me get this picture. This Look at this picture right here. It's so cute. Uh, let's, I can't move my, last time I tried to move my, my composite, it went kablooey. So I'm gonna have to leave this the way it is. Unfortunately, I don't want to move anything on the screen. So you're not getting the best view of it. I'm gonna have to sort that part out. But this hat is so cute. And um, it's a spider web and it looks like it's probably intarsia, but it's not. This is a knitted hat, but Jillian Eve, she combined this hat, this knit hat, with a crochet technique called uh, surface slip stitch. So those vertical lines is created by doing slip stitches into the knitting. It's very cool. She um, asked me a little bit about it um, while she was designing the hat, and I was so excited when she put it up. And I just wanted to give her kind of this special little bit of a shout out. And I'm sorry that I, I'm afraid to touch anything with this window because last time I got this working, I moved the window and then it all went away. But let's risk it because you need to see the whole hat. Or I could just turn off my webcam, huh? Oh, there we go, ha, ah, there we go. Just turn off the webcam, Carrie. But that's the hat, it's adorable. I'm so proud of her, I'm so happy for her. So um, she has this on sale on her website and I have a link to that in the description box. It's not an affiliate, hashtag not sponsored. And um, Bear, I blame her for my trip down the spinning rabbit hole. She has taught me so much. Folks should check her out, absolutely. And people should absolutely check her out. And she's such a good soul. Like, she really is. <laughs> She's not here right now, so I'm like, let me tell you how amazing she is, because she's like the sweetest person in the world. She really is. Oh, by the way, I have spun more. I know, I gotta wrap this up. We're running long, but look, I've spun more. I've spun more. I'm getting better. I am getting better. Um, let me just show you real quick. <laughs> I'm getting, oops, okay, that, ignore that. Ignore what I just happened, because, but I'm getting better. Let me move my keyboard out of the way. I'm getting better. I think I'm getting more consistent and I'm getting better. Like that was a really good like little run there, right? Thank you, Bear. I'm so, I'm enjoy I did this last night. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I have not given up. I am working at it. And I will say too, my little, my uh, makeshift, not makeshift, my DIY, okay, ignore that something just came off the yarn, it's fine. Um, I'll rejoin it later. My DVD, CD, makeshift, not makeshift, DIY uh, drop spindle is actually getting more stable now that there's more yarn on it. So I think the weight is getting better. <laughs> As more yarn is getting on it. If I do continue with this, I will probably get a properly balanced, professionally made drop spindle, but you know, um, at some point, <laughs> at some point. <laughs> okay, um, I think that's it for today. Run, ran a little long, but I think that's okay because you know we had a lot of fun. I hope we all had. I had a great time. I hope all y'all have had a great time during this nitty life. 
And if you are joining us on the replay, I hope you are enjoying it as well. Make sure to comment down in the description box below. I would love to hear about what you think about sock knitting, what your favorite heel is, what heel you don't like, why. I'd love to hear why maybe you haven't tried knitting socks yet. Is there a reason you haven't embraced sock knitting? Um, love to hear all about it. And, oh, Yes, Janet, so for planning for this week, big stuff is happening, big, big stuff. So on Friday, I will have my, finally finished it, finally finished all the testing, and we will be, I'm shooting this tomorrow, I'm going to do my epic, inexpensive acrylic yarn review. This is going to be acrylic yarn that I bought from Joann's, and that's kind of important, because one of the yarns I'm going to look at is the Joann brand, um, Yarn, by the way, I am not a Joann's affiliate. Um, not that I wouldn't mind being, but they still haven't approved me. But anyway, <laughs> but I planned this video before I ever thought about doing affiliate programs. But um, yes, so that is this, I'm going to be shooting that tomorrow. That will be my video on Friday is the epic review on uh, economical acrylic yarn reviews. Uh, in doing that, I will say there were some things that surprised me, and I definitely have some thoughts in terms of they're not all the same. They are not all the same. But, yeah, they're not all the same. I'm going to just leave it at that, and you can watch the video on Friday to find out my final thoughts on it. <laughs> then, um, this, so that's up next. Then I'm going to do the strong heel video that's going to be coming up next week and I think that'll be the last video in October if it's not the video after that I think I'm going to do is going to be um boss knitting short row substitution I haven't done a boss knitting video in a while um and <laughs> I've only done one boss knitting video um <laughs> I'm starting to think that the boss knitting videos are going to be kind of like uh, learning about how to substitute techniques for one another and I really want to do one on short rows because I love talking about short rows so that's kind of the plan up ahead you may have noticed I never did a blog post this past week I tried I sincerely sat down and tried to write it and it wasn't good it was boring and so I just didn't <laughs> I didn't post a blog post this week bad bad on my part a little tap on my hand for that um but this week i am going to put up a blog post where i'm going to talk about a little bit one thing about my video i didn't have time for and i wasn't really prepared to talk about was with judy's magic cast on actually going from the cast on and actually starting the toe itself so i think that's what this upcoming blog post is going to be about is um, getting the toe started on a uh, toe up sock and there'll be a little bit of video demonstration that'll be exclusive to that blog so unless I change my mind because that can happen um, that will be this Wednesday's blog post um, what else as always keep an eye out on the fiber indie list and fiber happenings I update that every Friday and most Mondays, sometimes I miss the Monday update because not a lot has changed and it's, I get busy, so I'm sorry. Uh, we do have two new designers, by the way, on the Fiber Indie list. I didn't have a chance to spotlight them completely, but I wanted to mention that there are two new designers. One is, um, oh shoot, I'm blanking. I'm just blanking right at the moment. Um, let me just get to it real quick. <laughs> Let me just get to my thing real quick because I just, I'm terrible. But you know, there are over 50 designers and spinners, dyers on the list now. So it's sometimes a little hard for me to remember all the names. Um, let's see. Bullock Ozcan Designs. She is a designer in North Carolina. She has some lovely kind of classic knitted work. Really cute stuff and then this one um shoot 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 you know what I could go to my Twitter 
oh, what is the, uh, the other designer, she's actually a loom knitting designer, which is very unique. Um, Janet, sorry, I have to go see you next week. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I know I'm running super, super late this week. <laughs> going so long. I have so much to say. Honestly, I didn't expect to talk about socks and heels for as long as we did. I thought it, I need to be better about that. I need to be tighter with myself in terms of talking about things, but I get, I get excited. And I like to do the pattern spotlights because I like to put a spotlight on patterns and stuff that maybe, here we go. Renee Van Hoy. Oh, that was it. Renee Van Hoy. She's the other designer that was added to the Fiber Indie List this week. She is a loom knit designer, and a lot of her work is around people who have vision issues and is really amazing. Check her out. She's doing things with... She's on Etsy. She's in my shop favorites. And yes, yeah, she's doing some really neat things that's showing that loom knitting can be way more than I at least thought it could be. So that's really exciting. All right, Jan Whitney, bye. Thank you. And I think that's everything for this week. So I'm going to just wrap things up. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have not already, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, check out my web page, uh, yes, my website, knitswhereitsat.com. That's where you can find the Fiber Indie List and you can find Fiber Happenings which is kind of a weekly roundup of various bits of new pattern releases, news, etc., from around the fiber universe. Down in the description box, you will find very useful information, including all of my affiliate links, if you would like, if you're planning to shop, anyway. <laughs> Please consider using one of my affiliate links. Uh, it can help support my channel because you get to enjoy these for free, but they are not free for me to make. Also, if you'd like to leave me a tip, you can find a link to buy me a coffee and you can buy me a coffee. And that is always greatly appreciated. Oh, thanks, mom. I always get a thumbs up from my mom. <laughs> so that is everything for this week. Too soon. Forgot I wasn't in studio mood. There we go. Um, that's everything for this week. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. As always, my PSA, make a plan to vote. Go to vote.org to make your plan to vote. Your voice does matter. Your vote does make a difference. Okay, thanks everybody. As always, happy knitting and happy health. Bye.